Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Now you may recall a few weeks ago I did a video entitled New to Oscilloscopes where I used my analogue single channel scope to explore some of the basic controls and use of a scope and I got lots and lots of positive feedback about that and a few requests to do a bit more so this is a response to that and I'm going to today uh, take a look at using a two-channel oscilloscope, uh, which is probably a little bit more common these days. And I'm going to use my Siglent bench scope, but as I'm going to mention later on in the video, uh, you don't need anything as flashy as that. It can be the simplest of two-channel scopes, whether it be a small one or a large one, whatever. Uh, but I'm hopefully going to demonstrate to you its ability to show what's going on inside a circuit and uh, to do that we'll try and do that in the most practical possible way and then we'll see if we can find the source of a problem in that cir circuit and solve it and hopefully see all that visually on the scope. So let's start with a quick check of the controls that you might come across on a two channel scope. Okay before we make a start on looking at the circuit we're going to explore using the scope I just wanted to talk a little bit about how you might use um, a two channel or more oscilloscope and everything I'm going to do today you can do with a two channel scope so I'm using my Siglent which happens to be a four channel um, but uh, the Miniware uh, DSO uh, 138 which you've seen me do on the channel before I'll put a link to that uh, video up there and also the um, tablet oscilloscope you've seen hopefully seen a review of I'll put a link up there to that as well we'll both be capable of, of doing what I'm going to do here so uh, with an oscilloscope that's got more than one channel uh, you've obviously got the ability to control the time base so if I do that you'll see it takes a moment or two for it to just catch up here because I've got a relatively slow um, square wave going on there but I can adjust the time base and the time base is adjusted for all channels as you can see there um, that's that's pretty much fixed there probably are some scopes that you can adjust the time base independently but certainly not this one but what you can do with all channels um, is you can adjust the sensitivity independently and on this scope um, if I've got channel 2 selected which is the purple trace if I adjust the sensitivity you can see the square wave goes up to the top and if I want to adjust the position of the square wave I can use that control there. Now on some two channel scopes you've got two uh, sets of knobs duplicated so you can do that with both channels on this scope that would make for an awful lot of knobs so um, it's a case of swapping between channels so if I now press channel 3 which is the blue trace these controls now operate the blue trace which is now um, vanished off the screen there so I'll just turn it back down again and Hopefully it's going to come back there you are and I can adjust the position of it like that, like so. So you may have two separate controls for each channel if you've got a two channel scope or you may just have to um, swap between the two as you swap between the channels. Either way um, that's the arrangement. Right let's now have a look at the circuit we're going to explore. Okay, let's look what we've got here on the breadboard and I've built a circuit in what I'm going to call quick and dirty mode apart from uh, quick, quickly checking the, the pin outs of one or two of the components. Um, I've actually just pretty much built this without reference to, to data sheets or, or mathematics or anything. So let's look what we've got. So I've got an AC supply that's going to be coming in here on these two pins currently disconnected. Uh, and then I've got a diode here, it's a 1N4001. So that's going to halfway of rectifier that AC that's coming in. I've got a, a smoothing capacitor connected between the um, opposite side of that diode and ground. And then I've got a 7805 voltage regulator here. And the output of that feeds the positive rail, which are all connected together on these breadboards. So I've established a, a ground connection on the negative and a 5 volt supply on the positive. Here I've got a, a a triple five timer uh, just working in its conventional elastable mode and I've chosen these resistors and that capacitor to give me uh, a flash rate that's that's going to be visible and I sort of just did that by trial and error really 
Uh, I've got a current limiting resistor here from the output of the 555 and I'll just move that wire so you can see it, that's just a scope probe wire. That's the current limiting resistor that's feeding the base of a general purpose NPN transistor there. And then I've got that NPN transistor, the collector and the emitter connected between, um, between ground and, and positive through a current limiting resistor. And then I've got a couple of white LEDs to demonstrate that the circuit's actually um, working. And the, these, the red, the blue and the green wires here are just wires that go off to the scope probes that we're going to look at in a minute. So let's just check the voltages. Uh, well, let's switch it down and make sure it works first. It works, great stuff. Right, so I've got the Kiwitz ST600Y here in auto mode. And nice thing about that is it'll distinguish between AC and DC. So it's telling me I've got about just over 19 volts AC, RMS, coming in. And then if I just pick up a ground here, that should be good enough. And on the opposite side of that diode there, I've got about something like 21 volts um, halfway rectified DC there. And then hopefully, <coughs> On the output of the regulator I should have something like 5 volts. So yep yeah, there we go 4.9 something so I've got 5 volts on the output there so uh, yep yeah, that's good got, got a power supply and we can quite clearly see the circuit is working um, and hopefully that makes some sense it's a really straightforward circuit but um, what I wanted to do was pick something that was uh, actually quite useful to look at. So let's have a look at now um, the output of the 555 and how that's being controlled by this capacitor circuit. And to do that, we're going to uh, just change around so that we can see the scope as well. So I'll just set that up. OK, so I've now got the scope attached to the circuit, as I've just described, and the purple trace is the output of the 555. In fact, I've actually got the, that, that particular channel connected to the base of the NPN transistor, just the other side of the current limiting resistor. So we've got the square wave output, as you might expect, and I've got that being used as the trigger. I've paused the scope because the flashing is relatively slow rate. I just wanted to, as the scope acquires the data, it um, it occasionally moves the display so I've just stopped the scope for a moment so I've just got a, a static display for you to look at so we've got the pulse there now the blue trace I've got that connected to the um, the capacitor which is the capacitor and the resistor network that's controlling the um, frequency of the 555's oscillation and hopefully you can see that capacitor fully charged here discharges here reaches uh, a point there where the 555 flips back to its on state so you can clearly see that that capacitor charge and discharge cycle is what's controlling the output pulses of the 555 and I've got this in DC coupled mode quite deliberately so that you can see where DC ground actually is and both DC grounds are roughly here so along the bottom so that's zero volts and that's whatever that is doesn't matter for right now but you can see that the capacitor discharge doesn't drop down to zero it drops down to uh, a point there which is um, still above zero but that capacitor is what is clearly controlling um, the speed of the, the 555 along with its associated uh, resistor network so uh, we've used the circuit there to explore that and that's absolutely great um, and the astute amongst you have probably thought hmm that's interesting something doesn't look quite right there and you'd be right so let's just take a screen grab of that and i'll now pop that screen grab on the screen for you there so you can look a little bit closer at what i can see here on the display and you can see that there's clearly some noise on the 555 channel and also on the capacitor channel so we've got some noise bit strange it's not affecting the way the circuit works but um, there clearly is something going on there so let's uh, now go to channel 2 and let's increase the volts per division 
which of course we can do um, like that and we can see this noise exaggerated remember on a scope that the x-axis the, the time base or the sweep um, is the same for all four channels but we can adjust the voltage um, to suit our situation on any any of the other channels so now I'm going to just open up the display a little bit here and we can clearly see we've got a noise spike and another noise spike and another noise spike so I'm going to just get a couple of cursors and I'm going to select um, cursors in X mode and then what we'll do is we'll move one cursor to the left hand end of that pulse there like so and then we'll remove the other cursor to the left hand end of the next pulse there and the delta here it's saying that's the difference between the two lines he's saying um, it's about 20 milliseconds uh, or if you like the delta 1 over the delta which is the the frequency is 50 Hertz well there's only one place that 50 Hertz can be coming from and of course that's that's the mains so we'll start the scope running again and I'm going to just turn down the uh, value to something more sensible again and hopefully we can get the display to update let's just do that there we go okay that's uh, settled down a bit and I'll turn those cursors off so we've been able to use the scope to establish that uh, a potential source for that noise which would appear to be the, the 50 Hertz input of the main somehow now it's not affecting the flashing of the voltage but it is noisy and if you wanted to eliminate eliminate that there's clearly something we need to do with the power supply section of the circuit so let's um, turn on channel one and I'm just making use of the fact that I've got four channels here but uh, channel one I've got connected to the output of the of the triple five timer so I'm now going to turn up the sensitivity of that uh, channel let's just let it acquire okay I think that'll probably do to show you the example so remember now that channel 1 the yellow trace is much more sensitive than the other two um, but we're now seeing what happens um, on the supply rail as the oscillator turns on and off the LEDs and we've clearly got something uh, going on it's clearly uh, there's the load coming on load going off as the voltage changes so if you um, then refer to a data sheet, which of course all good circuit designers should have done, one of the things uh, that's mentioned on the, the 7805 data sheet is that we should have um, a 100 nanofarad capacitor connected to the output from the output of the 555 to ground. So here's a 100 nanofarad capacitor, and I'm just going to pop that in uh, to the circuit, and hopefully when I do that, let it just acquire and as you can see a very dramatic change so that 100 nanofarad capacitor has completely eliminated um, the noise on the output um, I say completely eliminated because if we really turn it up um, there still is some noise a little bit and that's um, we have to bear in mind we're now got an extremely sensitive um, measurement going on there but we've effectively tidied up the output um, rather nicely and that's sort of cured so let's turn channel one back on and let's let it acquire first of all I keep forgetting it takes a moment or two to acquire a full buffer let's turn it right up and let's see if there's anything we can do about that that output because I've got a 22 microfarad capacitor as the smoothing capacitor so let's see if we were to increase that um, that would make how much difference that makes here I've got a a 220 microfarad capacitor at 25 volts so I'm just going to turn the supply off and I'm going to swap 22 microfarads for 220 to make sure I've got the polarity right which I have and let's turn the supply back on and let's see what happens just go to let, it, let it acquire and yeah it's smoothed it a little bit but not a great deal so I think the smoothing capacitor was actually pretty good let's just go back to the um, 22 make sure it gets in the right place that's the 22 
and let, just let the scalper quiet, it's quieting now yeah so it, it did improve it, it did take out some of that noise so a larger smoothing capacitor could, would help but of course um, if I just turn that sensitivity down so you can see the other two delays the real difference was made by that 100 nanofarad capacitor on the output of the um, 7805 and if I remove it again you'll hopefully see a dramatic change in the noise on the output doesn't affect the flashing of the LEDs but um, might potentially affect uh, electromagnetic compatibility of uh, circuits that were close to it so hopefully you've seen how useful a two-channel scope is particularly um, with its ability to show you what's going on in two separate parts of the circuit at the same time when we can clearly see the link between the pulses of the 555 and the charge discharge cycle of that uh, electrolytic capacitor that's that's connected to the control circuit well I hope that's made some sense and you found it useful um, it's certainly lots of controls on modern oscilloscopes and if you aren't very very careful you can get into a, a little bit of a confusing mess if you're new to using them and I think it's all too easy for, for people who've had a bit of practice including me to make lots of assumptions about people's ability when it comes to using complex instruments so certainly this and the previous video have been attempts to actually um, try and remove some of the, the confusion and show you some of the simple ways that you can use um, those, those instruments. If you've not seen the first video, it might be worth a look. I'll put a link up there. Um, thanks very much indeed for watching. Um, if you check out the description, you'll see a link to some of the Kiwitz multimeters, one of which you saw in use. If you uh, like what you see there, um, if you use the code that's also in the description, you'll get um, a discount and that also helps the channel so if that's something you'd like to do that helped me and I appreciate that either way it'd be great if you could click like that really helps the channel to grow and also be even better if you could subscribe too thanks very much for watching see you on the next video